Hey Legionnaires and welcome back, we're here with another Rome 2 battle for you today and this is an excellent siege battle with some insane scores for a certain faction in particular, one I will not name. But uh, yes, this is a 3v3 siege between two Egyptian attacking forces and one Alverni and uh, we have a Seleucid, actually no, I think we have, uh, no, I do apologise, we have two Egyptian defending forces and one Seleucid army and we have Alverni Nervi and an Egypt force on the attack. We have a lot of Egypt here today and it looks like we have some uh, light cavalry defending outside the walls already protecting this uh, I presume they're trying to protect the ballista over here or something um, But I can't see any ballista, but yeah, they all of a sudden have got bizarre defense over here We've got a uh, light cavalry outside. We have archers uh, Behind that and they're just facing off against they were facing off against some Gallic hunters and uh, some heavy horse. But yeah, we have a very quick start to uh, today's battle. And it looks like the light cavalry is looking for some targets now to go after. But yes, if you've been enjoying the content at the moment. And would like to see more Rome 2 uh, siege battles. Then please do leave a like and a subscribe. And a comment down below to show your support for uh, Rome 2. And the channel. And yes, we'll uh, get into it. I mean, I'd just like to thank you all as well for... All the support recently. There's been a lot of support re uh, on the channel, especially for uh, Rise of Mordor, in particular the Ma Minas Tirith battle. It's done really, really well so far from when I last checked. Um, so I just like you thank you all for that. And uh, yeah, we'll get straight on to uh, this siege battle. And it looks like uh, the Alverni are pushing forward, uh, uh, well, heavily. And on this side, it looks like the Nervi are already at the walls as well. Celtic warriors getting small. They've already destroyed a tower, though, impressively, of the Seleucids. So that's very good. Medium siege tower being destroyed, and now some ballista just picking off these poor Celtic warriors who are just uh, at the mercy of these this ballista crew. I mean, it looks like they're desperately trying to take uh, out the tower, out the uh, ballista with Gallic hunters, but they should really be using uh, fire arrows. And they're wasting ammo here, just throwing at the bottom of this uh, this tower. Really, they should just tell them to hold fire. But yeah, look at all of like the art. Arrows are hitting the target. They're using fire arrows. They do a lot more damage because they're trying to shoot the crew, which is just a failure. And so they're wasting ammo doing that. So that is a, a poor showing there from the uh, attackers. They really need to, uh, well, preserve their ammo especially. And then we looks like we've got a lot of Thorax sword over here gathered, ready to face off against their Egyptian counterpart, which looks like he's also bringing a lot of Thorax swords. Uh, Galatian Royal Guard, Royal Peltast, we've got Pikes as well, some really, really good units. And here comes the Light Cavalry again. It's going to harass this Arverni player, it looks like. And yet, here we go. They are going out and they're uh, trying to catch some of these Chosen Swords. And they're going to do just that. Take it out. I mean, they look like they're going to try and slow them down. I don't think they killed any. Just flatten them. They aren't very strong, this uh, Light Cavalry, but they're quick. So they're hard to catch. They can carry on just doing this and slowing down towers. And allows their archers to get more kills. So I can't see their archers around. Very much, but uh, yeah, their cavalry is around doing their own little bit. Now they're going to run back inside, and they barely took any losses. They took about two or three. And I think they're actually going to come for more. They're being greedy. The Egyptian player is being greedy. He needs to be careful. This, uh, I mean, it's like cavalry will run out of a uh, purpose soon once the attackers are inside the wall. But I'd certainly run it out and then maybe run it around the back somewhere to see if the uh, attackers lose sight of it. And try and uh, ambush some archers, possibly. But yes, it looks like the... Attackers are finally on Swall. Looks like he's going to be the Egyptian player here. And he's already lost a lot of troops. Look at all that. All these poor guys here just being javvy to death. And it looks like, uh, well, the Thorax are already ready here. And these poor, poor, like, the counterparts, the same th Egyptian Thorax, but from the attacker's point of view, are being javvy to death. Hopefully they can get their own back. But, uh, yeah, they've already lost, like, a lot of men just uh, from this attack. But this was sent in by a member of the Discord, of the Papal Legion Discord. Which is my Discord, and that is been that link is in the description. If you'd like to join, send your own uh, replays, or just like to join in some of the, our battles that we organise on there. Yeah, all are welcome. And here we go. It looks like we have some. Well, I want to say these is like uh, Galatian swords. Yeah, have been sent in. I was, didn't know if they're Galatian swords or Celtic warriors. They could have been either or, but they are already being sent in. And I imagine the Thorax swords will win that fight against the Galatian swords. And now it looks like, well, Egypt's well and truly landing. He's got lots of troops up here. Egypt, the attacking Egypt is in the blue, in the light blue. And then the uh, defending Egypt are in the red. Uh, if you didn't know, just a distinct two. Rome 2 is very good at that, at least. They can distinguish the difference between friend and foe. 
And it looks like these uh, heavy horse are going to deal with these uh, light cavalry very quickly. And uh, that's no surprise. But I mean, again, the heavy horse aren't going to be massively useful inside the walls, possibly. I mean, they might be able to get run around, arch, running down arches if they can hold the gate or make a breach. But uh, soon they will run out of a purpose. I mean, this is death here. They do not want to clump up here. This is a nice, solid area for the, well, for the thorax to just hold the line. And then uh, the archers just spill in arrows here. Like, they're just firing into the flanks here. I don't know, the, like, the flank that's easy to, like, hit. And, uh, well, yeah, they're just standing there jabbing. I mean, it's a good idea, but you want to kind of go into combat. And there you go. They're going to charge the defenders. And it's Egyptian thorax against Egyptian thorax. It's, uh... Pretty hard to tell the difference, but the ones on the far side are the ones that are defending. The ones nearest to you are the attackers at the moment. So let me know in the uh, comments who, you, who you're uh, backing. Are you backing the attacking Egyptians or the uh, defending Egyptians? My money's on uh, the defenders at the moment. Mainly because I think this positioning that they've got is so good. It's really nice. And they've surrounded the attacking uh, Egyptians currently. And so they can fire... Now into the backs of this unit, which is now being forced to turn around and shoot uh, attack here. So that's really, really good play. But let's have a look and see how the Nervi are doing. Are they doing okay? I mean, they seem to be uh, having a bit more luck. I mean, this whole area here is not being defended by the Seleucids. They might want to do something about that. And they might want to send more troops up. Because they've literally got one unit of uh, Celtic warriors in here. Facing down some Thorax swords. And there's a banner just keeps waving in the fa in my face. So we'll get rid of that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, these Celtics... Just look at the armor comparison. You've got the armored, like, chainmail here of this Thorax. And some just... <laughs> thorax got shot in the back by with a javelin. Um, and then you've got, like, the uh, bare-chested Celts there. And, I mean, yeah, these Celts are going to get absolutely cut down. I mean, these uh, the Arverni are now in here as well. They're doing their bit. They're sending in Chosen Swords. Chosen Swords against Thorax. Uh, recently, well, even though the Chosen Swords are heavy against very heavy in the case of a Thorax, I would say Chosen Swords will probably win this fight. Um, will they win it today? I don't know. Again, they've kind of fallen into the same sort of trap as the uh, Egyptians. That they uh, are kind of just facing a solid line here. And they've got to find a way around it. I mean, they're even on the walls here to stop, like, any flanking going on, like, coming off the walls here by the uh, Chosen Swords, like, coming off the walls here and then uh, going around this way. So that's really smart by the Egyptian player. Um, but, I mean, they are actually breaking. These uh, Thorax here are breaking. So that's uh, something I didn't realize. Maybe they are losing this fight, the uh, defenders. They're certainly losing there as well. They're going to flank around here. That's really smart. Um, I think they won here, did the uh, attackers, which is... Kind of interesting, because they've been shot in the back, but these are Nubian bows, so maybe they're just not strong enough. I don't know, but equally, the new the Gelak Hunters here are just shooting into the flank of the Thorax Swords. So, I mean, it's a trade for trade right now on uh, the skirmish front. Both are just firing into the infantry, which is really good. You don't want to be shooting opposing archers if possible. You want to shoot infantry, because infantry is not supposed to be dying to archers. Your archers are supposed to die to archers. If you can get your archers to kill other infantry, then that's really good. If you, if you know what I mean, you understand it. But if you're not, like, don't play Rome too often, you may not. But uh, infantry, you don't want dying to archers, basically. So if you can get your archers to shoot enemy infantry, that's a real bonus to you. Shoot and kill, that is, anyway. Shooting's just fine. You want to actually kill them. You want to see the light leave their eyes as you shoot them. But, I mean, it looks like uh, Egypt's got plenty of reserves. And he's got lots of uh, elite, more elite units to come up. He's got Royal Peltasens, as I mentioned, and Glacian Royal Guard. Still has some of the old Thorax as well, knocking about. It looks like there's two Egyptian armies here facing off uh, the attackers, which is no surprise. And it looks like uh, they're breaking the Quranian axe on here. No surprise there, though. This is a very light infantry unit against uh, the Arverni. And, well, I don't expect uh, any mercy given by these uh, angry Gallic warriors. Back on uh, the Nervi side, we'll have a look over here. He's finally landing more stuff by the looks of it, but uh, this area here, well, it was defended. We'll put it like that. Either they've shifted stuff across or it was always there, one or the other. But, um, yeah, they're having a rough time. These Celtic Warriors here are just no match to the Thorax. 
Uh, has he got much? Uh, he's got Gorilla Swords. He's got Fierce Swords. Fierce Swords are pretty good. He's got Oath Swan with a lot of Chevrons. So they'll be okay. But he's, I see a lot of Celtics uh, Warriors. And I see Mighty Horse and Noble Horse. And um, that's not a good sign. And uh, even Naked Spears. Um, so, I mean, yeah, there's a lot of units here that just aren't going to beat the heavily armored Seleucids. And it already looks like the um, they're already committing like, their reserves. So, it looks like the Nervo is kind of being absolutely just decimated by the Seleucids. So, that's good for the defenders. It means the Seleucids can start to send stuff across the Egyptians, who are starting to show a few holes. Not too many, but starting to show a few. Um, but, yeah, we'll have a look and see in a moment if that affects anything. But we'll go back to the main fight over here. And we'll see uh, how this goes. It looks like the Egyptians are still holding this line. It's a bit ragged now. It wasn't as uh, uniform. It's not as uniformed as it was before. And that banner, another banner waving in my face. The true enemy today. Banners waving in the face of the camera. But yeah, you can see the Celts here with their backs to us, facing off against these thorax. They could certainly uh, send a unit through here. If they can get this O-Sworn, get it in, form in column formation, they could probably get through this area here if you follow my cursor. Literally, probably as soon as they come off the tower, could go through this gap here. And then they could uh, encircle certainly a lot of units. But, I mean, at the same time, Egypt just needs to send up another wave. Uh, because they are, well, they're making holes. This thorax could go through a gap here. At the same time, Egypt needs to get, like, units off the walls here. I know there's a siege tower here, but... Do you need to have that unit on the wall? You could fall back. Uh, try and use the archer's like flanking ability like you were earlier. But honestly, at the moment, these two are they're just gonna like beat each other to a pulp. Really does. Looking at like the um, the unit cards that are left. Though the Celts seem to be having a well, I say a bit more success, and then I hover over one and it says lo unit losing. So maybe not. Um, but we'll see. I still think the Egyptians are doing okay. The plan, plan A did not go according to plan. They didn't hold that solid line. They just let their archers do a lot of the work. But they seem to have enough uh, infantry. And now it looks like even archers now being sent in. They still have enough men to possibly hold this line. All they've got to do is, I think, hold on long enough for the Seleucids to arrive. Uh, because they look like they're beating the Nervi very, very well. Um, we'll quick have a quick look and see how that uh, effectiveness is going on. I mean, they're going to try and look like they're going to try and burn this tower, which is a good idea with cavalry. They may lose a lot of this cavalry, and it's good cavalry, mighty horse. I mean, the mighty horse isn't as great. The name makes it sound better than it is. They're only medium melee. We've got noble horse, which are good. But uh, yeah, they're literally coming up this tiny little area here, so you only have to defend three areas. And that's not a great way to stretch in a an enemy. You want to attack this whole wall, really, from like the very end over there to this gate over here. But I fought on this map a long, uh, a lot of times, and it's a very, very. This side is a, certainly a good side to defend. As these fierce swords here get surrounded, that's so sad to see. I mean, they're so easy to kill. I imagine in reality they'd be so easy to kill. You just high bind your shield, and then you just poke with your spear. Uh, reminds me a bit of like the uh, Boltons, like uh, the Battle of the Bastards. Just hide behind you and just poke the unprotected, unarmored. Wildlings, but this time it's the fierce swords. But yeah, this map is this side is very easy to defend, I find, because you can put archers up here on this cat point, right on the edge, and you can shoot anything that's coming across to attack this gate here. Like I said earlier, you only need to defend three areas here, and then you just rain hell onto them. And they are doing just that. Syrian heavy archers, throw our spears, doing just that. They've got archers here raining hell, I think, onto these cavalry. I mean, they should be anyway. But uh, yeah, so they do seem to be having a rough time, the Nervi, still. The cavalry is actually burning down this gate. Um, it's 40% fire damage. It's going to need a lot more than that. I can see a lot of corpses, though, of dead horsemen. They need to do some more attacking. But they can now go across the gate. There is no, like, men here just defending it. There's some uh, mercenary leopard warriors, though. I've never seen these guys before. I don't think anyway. And these guys look interesting, at least. Oh, I like the look of these guys. Yes. Hopefully they'll be okay in combat. I mean, the light spear, I don't think they are. They might have a lot of abilities, I wonder. But we've got uh, some units coming up. We've got a naked swords unit, or naked warriors here, with triple silver chevron. I'm expecting great things. I'm expecting great things. But yeah, the Celts are running into an absolute 
wall now of Egyptians. I wonder if this is the reserves. Yeah, I can see Seleucid sending stuff over. This must be it for the Egyptians. But I think the uh, like attacking Egyptian needs to send more up. Catch these Nubians out. Even if they are sacrificing themselves. Catch them out. But yeah, the Seleucids now able to send stuff over there. That's really, really bold by the Seleucids. It could go still very wrong for them on against the Nervi. They're not out yet. Not till the fat lady sings. If she can sing, that is. That is the real question. The Nervi were hoping she can't sing. They want to last as long as possible. Now, if you don't want to know what that saying is, that's because you're not British. Unless it's not just a British saying, then I'd be quite surprised. But yes, these uh, Chosen Swords are running into a, a bit of a wall now. They've had their first initial uh, success fighting the Egyptians up here. They seem to, seem to be running out of uh, reserves. I mean, they're sending Chosen Spears up. Not a bad infantry unit, but it's Spears attacking, well, a sword line, really. And they really need to, like, find gaps. Like, this is a gap here. There's a gap here, really. I mean, it's not... It's not literally a gap, but this is just defended by Nubian Bowmen. That is a gap available to abuse. You kill the Bowmen and you get him behind it. Then next looks like it's just Thorax, which aren't the greatest. Uh, but yeah, oh yeah, you can see here they actually are breaking through. But they're getting absolutely hammered by Jabbies from Crani and Axemen back there. These, these boys here, they're going to get sent in soon. It looks like, yep, yeah, they're coming in to attack the, the flank of these uh, Chosen Swords. Exposed. That's the exposed flank of them. I was trying, literally trying to think of that word ages ago. Exposed flank. But yeah, that's a really good angle there by these mercenary Cretans. They're shooting into the backs of these thorax. Going to get some really good kills there. Hopefully they carry on doing that. They need to keep doing it. They need to start using tactics like this. You've got to burn through all your ammo. Get some insane kills. And you can with shooting into the rear. And they're breaking more stuff. And this is really good as the sun blazes down onto this battlefield. Look at these Celts, they look glorious. This game still looks glorious, it holds up so well. And now it's just Karani and Axman defending this flank here. And these guys, they've got no chance against like Chosen Spears or Chosen Swords. They are going to break. And you can get in behind anyway, look at this, they're in behind. They can support their allies, the Egyptians, over on this flank. They're now surrounding these Thorax with their Chosen Spears. Cut these guys down, every last one of them. And yeah, these guys are now breaking. I thought they were being surrounded by something, but maybe not. Maybe not. But they need to send in more now to the Egyptians. Now is the time. The initiative is with them. They need to attack while there's still very few Seleucids over here. But you, because you can see the Seleucids have finished, really, the uh, the Nervi. This is not a good move here by the Nervi. Just blobbing here. At least go onto the walls. You should really, like, mount the walls and walk around the walls. And uh, try and at least flank. I mean, they're going to break the Soros Spear. But there's so much more over here. They need to really uh, just keep like a guerrilla sword or something just to stand here, stand guard. When I mean, they got units here. Actually, maybe this, uh, is this Oathsworn? Yeah, I think this Oathsworn's been given that duty. But it's fighting pikes. Should not be doing that. Should just fall back. If you're fighting pikes, fall back. You've got more Thorax swords up here. Some Thoria spears. They're trying their best. They're trying their best. I won't lie. The Nervi are going to take as many men with them as possible. And that might be enough. They might not win or survive. If they can take enough men with them, that'll be a, a big win. I just I also really love the shape of their shields, I just realized. They're like um, hexagons, like thin hexagons. That's really cool. Really unique. Well quite a few of them are. They have got like oval shields as well. That is a a very cool styled shield. I'm all about the unique sort of things in a reality and in gaming. Like, everyone that's got a circle shield, circle shields are cool on that, but everyone's got them. Get hexagonal shields. If anyone can get a dodecahedron shield, that would be cool. Someone make a mod for that. More sides on your shield, the better, I say. It looks like an Egyptian general's now in combat over here. Royal Thorax uh, Swords. I mean, he's fa facing Oswald. We're losing decisively. They need to get some support to that. This gatehouse still hasn't burned down. They're really trying their hardest just to burn this gatehouse down to get cavalry in. At this point, just dismount the guys. There's not many of them left. Yeah, it would help, but I don't know if cavalry's going to help that much. Yeah, these poor Oswald have got their backs to the gate. They're trying to hold it. Or just keep it neutral. Oh, 
Oh, the volley! That is nasty. Who's firing volleys? Oh, Gallic Hunters. They're firing volleys, and the general does not like that. He is falling back. That is a really, really good play, and they're not even looking the right way just yet. They're trying to form shield wall, and they've taken at least another 10 losses before they've uh, formed that shield wall. They might take more. They might still take more when in shield wall. It just stops them, uh, like, reduces them. You can still take losses. Yeah, and they are. Look at that because of the arc. They are firing. They're not really firing directly. They're firing almost over the shield wall, like, over the wall and, like, hitting the back ranks of the shield wall. That's really nice. Yeah, that is reducing this unit. Jeez. I'm just going to watch this volley. Just, like, see the numbers. 99. Another volley. Yeah, look at that, reducing them. And they're going into combat now, the Oswan. Yeah, all that general is in trouble. 84 men. I get these uh, archers to, like, maybe shoot into the back here, possibly, or something. Actually, no, these guys are well and truly really done. But, yeah, the uh, Arverni and the Egyptians are in. Like, the defending Egyptians held at the wall. And, like, a big respect, and they held there, and they fought hard. Like, look at the amount of dead here. That is insane. Like, the amount of dead here it is in the, like, the hundreds. It must be the thousands. And these naked swords are still going ham. Their silver, she uh, silver uh, chevrons, they're going ham. And yeah, they're, like, almost falling back. The Egyptians are trying to fall back once they've got left. Nubian bows. Trying to get back uh, thorax, th royal thorax and thorax. And the general's going to try and get back, but I don't think the uh, Gallic Hunters will allow them to. They'll fire off as many volleys as possible. They're going to capture the gate finally. They're going to capture it before they're going to burn it. Yeah, it's had 36 fire damage. A volley, come on. If you can shoot this general before he makes it. They might shoot into the wall now. I think you're too close. Yeah, they're too close. If they shoot now, they're going to shoot into the, just the top of that wall. Yeah, just get inside. Just shoot the general. There'll be another time. Possibly. I don't know. It's going to be hard. The Sluice is going to have to fall back a lot of stuff. If the Arverni and the Egyptians can strike quickly, uh, they could catch the Egyptians out. I think their main cap point is here. It's like somewhere here. I can't remember exactly on this map. It might be a little bit further back. I thought it was around here somewhere. It's like that tree. Um, no, that's just a tower. Oh, is this it here? Mm, it might be. I can't remember. I can't exactly, exactly remember where the main cap point is on Berdegala. But, I mean, they're falling back to here anyway. And this is a nice little... Uh, look at this spot here for all these Syrian heavy archers. They can't really see anything, but... Uh, they can see... Well, they can see over this, this cliff. <laughs> sort of. They've just been told there's like one spotter really here. And you're just like... Arverni, over the hill! 12 o'clock and you just shoot. And, uh, I mean, they're chasing down this general. He's... I mean, he might get shot by friendly fire here. Oh my gosh, that was a nasty volley. And yeah, they're cheering. They might get shot. They're cheering like, yes, we met, we survived. But they could have died there. Oh, they still have pikes. These guys are pikes. Royal, a Hellenic Royal Guard for pikes. Oh, that's nasty. That's cruel by the Egyptians. They sent like all their other troops forward. But not, like, didn't save these guys. I mean, they can still flank though. They need to be careful with the Egyptians. They can get around the back here. Just have to, oh, maybe not. The Sluice are defending. They are, like, making this whole area their, like, fortress. Ah, oh, here's the cat point. It's here where this general is. I knew it was somewhere around here, so I think you just, like, you take this, this, uh, I don't know, town hall or something like that, and you, you claimed the victor. But, I mean, pikes aren't the end of the world because there are Thorax pikes for the Egyptians, so it's not game over yet. And, I mean, these Gaelic hunters, I think, have still got a fair amount of ammo. The Cretan archers have probably still got ammo. And they have superiority in archers, I'd say, to the, uh, attackers. They also have to defend this choke point here. If I was smart and a defend uh, an attacker, I'd get my archers up to here. I'd deal with the Assyrians first possibly, if you can. And then I'd shoot into the backs of these pikes. Or, you just don't even bother doing that. You could just shoot into the front of them and avoid the Syrians. Which is actually probably even smarter actually. I outsmarted myself. Yeah, if you go this way just come in and like, shoot into the front of the pikes. It's not like, they can't stop them. They can't stop the archers. They'll die. They'll bleed. And either they fall them back and send up something better, or they, uh, or they, or they die. And here we go. It looks like the Nervi's are finished. They're getting sandwiched by pikes and more pikes. A bad way for these Oswan to go. I won't lie. The uh, the king of the uh, the king of the Nervi, I guess he would be, or something like that, or a, a chieftain, is going out in a pretty in a pretty bad way. And it looks like he's breaking. 
Yeah, the unit's breaking. And there you go. That's the nerve I out. I obviously didn't really show them as much, but there's a lot more action going on over on that side. This side just seemed a bit doomed from the start. The assault was just not good. At, uh, just not a very great assault. I and mean, they lost two towers as well to uh, Ballistas, I think. So that was really good, well done by the Seleucid player. But yeah, you've got to attack the entire long like part of this wall. Someone has to attack it. I think if you all attack over there, it makes it very easy for the defenders. But uh, yeah, someone has to attack here. You need to attack the, on, the entire way, and also possibly a bit more patient. You need to attack the entire time as your, uh, like your counterparts. Maybe it would have been better if the Egyptians had gone there. Maybe attacked on this side, and then had the two Gallic factions attack on this front here. Because I don't think the Gallic faction on its own was a very great idea. But uh, who knows? I don't know. It's, uh, it's hard to say. It's hard to say. What would have been better? I am merely a watcher. But uh, it looks like these Syrian heavy archers are just getting ready. They're gonna, they are actually going to come this way. Are the uh, archers? They're going to shoot into the, the well. It was going to be the back of the pikes, but it's not anymore. They have fallen back in, even th further. But um, it looks like they're going to get up like their thorax swords and just jabby these guys, which is also a good idea. Really, the defenders should have some sort of swords to protect these guys, swords or spears intermingled, so they uh, at least have some sort of missile block. But yeah, we're going to see some jabby throws in a moment here. I imagine. Yep. Yeah. Javi throws on this side, certainly. And these guys will start to drop, I imagine. Oh, they're actually getting shot as well. Who are they being shot by? Oh, the Nubians. Okay, at least the Nubians are going to take some boys with them. And it looks like the uh, Syrians are coming up. If the Syrians attack uh, the infantry, well, that might not be the worst thing in the world. These Gallic Hunters can... Actually, these Gallic Hunters are going to sneak around. There is a way all the way up here they could go, but I don't know if they're going to go that way. Surely not. They need those Gallic Hunters to fight the Pikes. Shoot the Pikes. they got one unit, but they might need more. And they've got their own Pikes and Royal Peltas ready on this side. They, uh, I mean, it looks like these Nobian bow bows are just being sent in to die. It's going to be the Battle of the Archers. And yeah, here we go. Looks like, uh, well, the Gallic Hunters and the Nubian Bows are going to fight for an entertainment of their of their uh, infantry lines, really. These poor, poor men. Literally, they've run out of a purpose and they're just like, yeah, that's it. You're going. Oh, and the Pikes have been massacred on this side. 71. And yeah, well... That's a pretty, uh, that's pretty convincing. And now this, uh, this one here has gone forward. This is really sending like main infantry, like these Thoros spears, sending these guys in. They're a better set, like thing to send in than, um, well, than the Pikes. If you keep going forward, they should have countered. Should the, uh, like the Alverni and the Egyptians should have attacked, uh, countered while they didn't have their pikes set up. Because that's the only real thing they got left. I mean, they got silver shield pikes as well, knocking around somewhere, but I don't know where they are exactly. They're not being committed. Put it like that. It's going to be really close. It's going to be really, really close. We've got some uh, archers going into combat here against Chosen Spears. Well, that's going to be a massacre. These poor guys will uh, definitely be killed off. Yeah, there they go, routing. That's all the archers gone there. Now they could just go and attack these uh, thorax swords. Certainly is a, a more weaker underbelly, possibly. I mean, these pikes are going forward again. They're going right in the front lines and just asking to be javied or like even, um, or maybe flanked. Oh no, they've sorted that out. The thorax spears have finally made that gap. They are just getting javied, like point blank range. And yeah, they're going to send in, they're actually going to send in thorax. That's not a good idea. That's not healthy for the thorax at all. Yeah, just carry on jabbing. You've got to be patient. Just jab these men. They're going to put their pikes in the front line. That's their fault. You always put, like, spears first and then send the pikes in once the actual engagement's begun. Win that or force them back. Um, but there's only, there is a right time to use pikes, and it's... Uh, I don't think it's this one. I think the defenders are uh, being caught short here a little bit. 
They might want to send their pikes in at the uh, at the gates, like at, at the wall battle almost. Might be a better idea because there was a lot of engagements going on there. There's a lot a lot in locked in combat. Obviously there would have been risk to the, the archers. But now like all the units are gone. Look at the sheer amount of bodies here. This is insane. Like so many down there. Littered this entire area. That is insane. That is so many kills. It'll be interesting to see how many kills like each player's got at the end. But yeah, where are the uh, Gallic uh, archers gone? Oh, they're back here. Okay, I thought they got ridden down or something, but they were going all the way around there. But their general's dead. I didn't even realize. Okay, so the Arverni general is dead. That is a big loss. They need to be careful with that then. It looks like uh, they pulled out the pikes, and it's now just throwing spears holding this choke point. So we're going to see who can win that. I imagine the Thorax will probably win this, along with the uh, Earth Swarm being sent in here. I mean, they're just generally over time, they're going to get sent in. I don't think they need to send more in. They don't want to tire out these troops, especially that's a fresh Earth Swarm. I mean, the Thorax are losing on this side to Royal Peltas. That's no surprise. They need to be careful with the Thorax coming around this side. They could get pincered. This Pike unit needs to really stretch out as much as possible. I'll we'll even use like the reserves here of the Arverni just to watch that tiny little flank. Oh yeah, look at that. That's a chain round and a half there by the Seleucids if I've ever seen one. Have they lost their general? I don't know. Maybe they have. I haven't seen the Seleucid general in fairness. Maybe he is dead. I mean, yeah, the front line is now broken up. The uh, Arverni are well inside it. The Zosworn have uh, broken, broken through and they're going after whatever they can find. These units won't hold here long because they've got their flank threatened. I bet they're not holding, are they? Oh, uh, the Thoros aren't liking it. It won't be long till the uh, the Thorax don't either. And yeah, you can see here, they're really desperate trying to hold this ch choke point. Where are the pikes? Here they come. The Silver Shield pikes are finally here. They've had nothing to do for ages. They need to get up here and fight. Now it's time to send them in. It's a fully fledged combat going on. They won't pull out their infantry now, will the uh, attackers. Oh, and the archers are starting to show their, their worth. They're focusing down like generals. Or even Rodian Slingers, that's a good target as well. And the ch these archers, you don't see this very often, archers chasing down Thorax Swords. Yeah, they'll get some nice easy kills for that. These uh, Thorax Swords are not even going to be able to form up properly. But, I mean, now that they've turned around, they should probably beat all these these guys. I mean, yeah. I mean, they're sending in naked swords, though. Those naked swords, I'm sure, have got plenty of kills. Let's have a look. 317 and counting. Oh, boy. Yeah, they, they're they going to do well. If they can get to 350 by the end of the game, well done. But I don't think they will. I think they're pretty knackered, pretty finished off. If they get to 350, though, then that's very good. But, yeah, these pikes now are in combat. I mean, they're getting... They're losing decisively, apparently. They need, they need to get focused down by the attackers. Have they still got ammo? If they still got ammo, they got hope. But they look like they're running out of archers. Those Gallic Hunters all went in and they all died. What's over there? Here, a Mercian Korean. 22 men. Oh no, he's... Yeah, he is over there. Oh, is it bugged out or something? I think that might just be one guy that's bugged out, isn't it? Oh, it's a couple of guys bugged out. Maybe... Yeah, well, that's a shame. Because, uh... They're going to need every archer they can get, basically, to kill those pikes. They don't like they've got many left now. And they're going to be forced to charge in. Oh, this could be a sad, sad thing. It's going to be close. This has been a close battle. The Arverni are uh, kind of leading the way at the moment. And as soon as the pikes get like anywhere close to this front line, they're just like having none of it. But this, this pike unit hasn't even got its swords out. I'd attack down here. I'd keep pushing here. This one has. Uh, they're gonna. Oh, they just told him to get him out now. Yeah, that's when he. As soon as he tells him to get his pikes out, he's having none of it. He's also, I think, getting like that charge bonus off with Zos one, trying to break these guys, which isn't a bad idea. 
There's a gap through here, though. You can get around there. I'd send the Egyptians. Tell the Egyptians to get around that gap. There is not much left in reserve. If they can make the uh, Seleucid general commit himself, possibly somewhere. If they can throw in their lot here. I mean, they're actually sending pikes in this way, which is a good idea. They can force more stuff around there. There is definitely a gap here to be abused by maybe some uh, Galatian Royal Guard. Oh, here you go. Chosen Spears. They're going to do just that form column and go up this gap. Excellent. I'm glad that other people are like picking up on this idea. It's a really good tactic. And there you go, into the side of the pikes. Well, actually, the thorax did save them. The pikes are still intact. They've been saved. But what is it? This formation is starting to break. They are starting to... If they keep pushing forward these pikes, they can get flanked. Like here, they could get flanked now. Oh, they them being aggressive. The attackers being aggressive. Or the defenders, sorry, being aggressive. Not a good idea. The attackers, of course, have to be aggressive. Time is of the essence. Yeah, these pikes are uh, going to make easy meat of these archers. They could push around here. I mean, those chosen, chosen spears are broken. They're now charging in their archers. They should just be killed off by the Thorax. But it is now really the Arverni is kind of finished and the Egyptians are left. But look at that. There's a gap. That's a huge gap to get through now. These pikes are way too far forward. They've had so many chances. Attack now. Oh, I mean, they have got Thorax in the way, actually. Hmm. That's a shame. A real shame. They are getting very unlucky. Let's get rid of the foliage for a bit. Because that's uh, kind of getting in the way now of the battle. But they're just charging in. These Thorax need to be careful. Again, on this side, they need to just uh, maybe go in and get these, these guys. They can't keep falling back. I mean, they can. But eventually, they'll just take up other positions. Pikes on this side, they seem to be doing okay. They seem to be winning this fight. Generals are being sent in here. They've still got... Fresh Thoros to come up. Jeez. And they're going to form column and get around the corner. They're going to try and do what the Chosen Spears did. And they might. I mean, they were slightly stopped there. And these uh, Glacier Royal Guard are going to save the flank. Really good play there by the Egyptian player. I think he's focusing more here. And he has realized what he could do against the Seleucid player on the uh, other flank. And look at that. They're running away now in column formation. And I mean, they're nearly out of troops here. The Egyptians are just throwing in literally just ragtag troops. It's really down the Seleucids. And they are just grinding here now. I mean, if they can punch the center, they are far too, like, thin now uh, for the pikes to go the entire way across. There is going to be a gap for the attackers to make advantage of. And they just need to attack here, where all the archers are. This is easy pickings. Easy pickings. Yeah, these poor guys are going to get massacred. Masked, I tell you. They're just cutting down Syrian archers like butter. Are they falling back again? Oh, they just keep falling back. Oh, that's a really good time to fall back, though. I couldn't think of a better time to fall back because it's not a fallback. It's an outflank. And yeah, now these uh, Galatians and their oath-sworn kin can turn around. And they got a face. And I think those pikes are broken. Oh, no, they're trying to fall back with their heads down. They're beaten. They know that they've been caught out. And they have got to... They need to follow that up. The attackers need to follow that up. Don't let them form up. Do not let them form up. Get in behind. Yes. At least get in behind. Very nice. Very nice. And you can surround these silver shields. Don't engage. The jo oh, no. Got to engage the silver shields. The pikes need to be killed. If you can kill the pikes, the, you've won the battle. They look like they've got... Have they got their own pikes in here? These are Hellenic Royal Guard. Well, at least got small units of pikes left. I mean, they're still fighting desperately over here. These thorax pikes are doing their bit. They're desperately trying to uh, kill off the uh, Galatian Royal Guard and the uh, thorax pikes here. They might need to send in their general around here, just or maybe just to buff them. I don't know. But they are breaking the pikes here. That is huge. And the Galatian Royal Guard is in. Oh, that is. this might be good night Vienna for the defenders. They've done a really good job here of the attackers. Being patient. And this tiny unit of Oathsworn... It's going to get in behind and do a lot of damage to these uh, silver shields. And you can just see, they're just like, the guys in the front just look behind and they're like, what? They're behind us? Someone turn around and kill these men. And they're just like, these pikemen are just like, we did nothing wrong. We've just fought it the entire time. And the Hellenic Royal Guard's breaking. That's gone. The silver shields will be next. The general really needs to, like, for the shield bearers, needs to, like, either fall back. They need to just bail and get what back they can. Yeah, look, you can see they're trying to do that just now. Without their pikes, they can't face off the thorax pikes of Egypt. 
So they might be in trouble here. They need to deal with this silver shield one. This is still a big silver shield unit. At this point in the game, 78 men. Get him. Yes, don't let them don't let them go. And the attackers have done such a good job. Oh, look at that guy. It's like, no. It's finished. It's over. Thuria Spears, they're wa well, not wavering, but losing decisively. The general, he's doing okay. He's still holding the banner. They're actually pinning back the pikes. They've done a good job here. These pikes are getting absolutely, like, mauled. So maybe it's still not over if they can kill their pi uh, the Egyptian pikes. They need to send up the uh, Egyptian general wherever he is. Get him involved over here. Like the attacking Egyptian general, that is. Or do they? If they can kill the saluted general, he's losing. He's a shield bearer as well. He's not, like, the strongest in combat. But you flank him. Flank him here with uh, Royal Pelgas. Or go for the cab point, in fact. Where is that? It's there. Or literally there. You could go and cap it. These pikes might just need to hold on long enough. Just don't die just yet. Keep killing. I mean, they might break the Egyptian general here. Oh, it's so close. 98 men. 98 men doomed to die. And they're all in bronze armor, so you can barely tell who's who. Well, not bronze armor, but bronzy colored armor. And there you go, a draw. <laughs> How is that possible? I think it would have been... Okay, so they must have run out of time. But, uh... Or, like, the players had to leave, or one or the other. But, I mean, I think they must have run out of time. And they fought to a standstill. How is that possible? A draw. Uh, but I think the attackers were going to win. And uh, if they were given a little bit more time. But we'll end the replay and have a look at the end results. But, yeah, Smoke Z, who sent this in, 4,001 kills for the Arverni. That is insane. And, yeah, I mean, those one got 498 kills and some of the others. Um, but, yeah, we'll have a look at them quickly. So, uh, Oswan getting 319, 428 here for another Oswan. I don't know why he's got some at the bottom and some at the top. But, yeah, the other one got 282. They all did really, really well, this Oswan. His heavy horse still doing quite well. Getting 146 kills. His Galakund is getting 191. His Chosen Spear is 198. They did really well. 202 for his... Uh, Chosen Swords, his uh, Naked Warriors got over 350, 367 kills. Insane. So, well done to Smoke Z for and uh, thank you for sending that in. It's excellent, excellent battle. Um, shame it ended in a draw. I think you really would have, you would have won, given like a few more minutes. Um, and then the Nervii, who was played by uh, Hedge Receiver, only gets 704 kills, shows a difference. And he really just attacked somewhere that he just could not really like win. He could not win. Uh, his best unit is general getting 178 kills um, in comparison to like Smokesy who uh, got uh, like Oswan nearly into the 500s. Shows that just like attacking in the right areas uh, you'll do so much better. Then we've got KR 2004 he's playing as the Egyptian player, uh, the attacking one um, and his Royal Peltas getting 116, his Merced Road and Slingers 130, his uh, Cretan Archers 148, his Glacian Guard 255 uh, 282 actually for that one and the Thorax Pikes getting 161 and his Thorax Swords getting 325, really really good and his uh, Thorax Swords getting 241 so that's pretty good as well for them, they don't always do very well, then we've got Rip Life who is playing as one of the Egyptian players um, his general only getting 67 kills pretty poor for a Royal Thorax his Nubian Bozo getting 175 kills which is really good for Nubian Bowman not a very high uh, priced unit so they did really well um, his Royal Thorax here, again, not doing very well in kills. Not, possibly not the best uh, buy. Better bring in, like, Royal Peltasts. Uh, his, uh, the normal Thorax Swords, which he spammed out. Look at this amount. Uh, 202 there. Uh, 222, sorry. The best unit there. Then we got Seti Trombe, who was playing as uh, another Egyptian army. And he uh, got 143 kills with his Royal Thorax. Uh, 204 with his Chariots. I didn't even see his Chariots. Don't know where they went. Maybe they went after... I think they went. might have gone off the Nervii. Uh, I might have missed that. Uh, 402 with the scythe chariots. Jeez, I did not even see these chariots. Uh, and they did insanely well. Um, shows kind of like the action that was going on on, that, like on the other side that I did not catch. But yeah, they did insanely well. I did not even see them. His uh, Nubian bow is getting 255 kills as well. Did really well. And his um, Mercenary Leopards 
didn't do very well. Um, so definitely not worth bringing them, even though I've never seen them before. And then 101 kills with Crowning Axeman. His Pikes are poor, and his uh, Thorax Swords. The best one I'm getting 143, which is more like the, the Thorax Swords I know. They always seem to do poor for me. The max damage. Who did try and do the max damage possible? 3,104 kills for him. They did really, really well. Um, look at his kills with his Silver Shield Pikes. 380, 350. 250 with his Sorak Swords and his Syrian Heavy Archers getting 222 with the best one there. They all did really, really well. That's some insane amount of kills in this battle. And yeah, I mean, and then his Thoros Spears, 105, which is not too shabby for them. But yeah, what an insane battle. And 4,001 kills for the Arverni. I've never seen that many kills for the Arverni, but that is really, really well done. Um, but yeah, so if you enjoyed that and you would like to see more Rome 2 sieges, as epic as that, I will try and get as many as possible. But do remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here, and leave a comment to support the channel. And until next time, Legionnaires, wow, I'm going to need a break after that. Bye for now.